What is going on guys? It's your boy DPJ here today with another Destiny video. Now, it was believed that there wasn't going to be any changes applied to weapons before the Rise of Iron. Everybody believed that there was going to be um, like basically a massive patch after the Rise of Iron has dropped, which would basically change the way some of the weapons works. Well, actually, there will be a change to many of the weapons. Actually, I think all the weapons, uh, especially the weapon archetypes, across the board and now Bungie have just released a massive weapon tuning article which you will find linked in the video description but in this video we're going to go through it all now if you guys do enjoy the video do leave a like i do appreciate the support but let's just get straight into it and we're going to start with exotics and the fabian strategy now this weapon will receive a buff kills this weapon now automatically load a portion of the magazine and increased base range by 16 percent and stability by 44%. I'm going to have to get this out of the vault and try it out. It sounds like it's going to be pretty badass. Moving on to the fawn. Now they're actually nerfing the fawn once again. I cannot believe this is actually happening. What they're going to do is they're going to reduce base range by 25%. That to me, I mean, it's not amazing in PvP now. It's never going to be the weapon it once was. But it's kind of disappointing. We're going to see it nerfed again. So base range on the fawn is going to be reduced by 25%. Moving on to a big weapon right here, the Universal Remote. Now this is going to receive a nerf as well. The Exotic Perk range bonus reduced by 75%. No longer guarantees maximum shotgun range. That is unbelievable. An increased rate of fire, but lower damage as a secondary effect. So I don't know how this will affect, well, like the, the range is reduced by 75% when aiming down sights, which is a part of the exotic perk. Reduced by 75% is massive. That's crazy, that is, it really is. Okay, we're going to move on to the Dreg's Promise. Now this is getting a buff, increased damage by 8% and increased magazine size by 3. The Touch of Malice. Now the Touch of Malice is self-damage and infliction now removes Blessing of Light. So when you use that Blessing of Light bubble, step out of it, shoot Oryx. This will apply damage to your Blessing of Light. Moving on to the Boolean Gemini. Added Intrinsic Perk to High Caliber Rounds. Uh, moving on to the No Time to Explain. Added Intrinsic Perk, Headseeker. Well now we're going to talk about a weapon type. Sniper Rifles. So these are the things changing to them. Reduced damage on mid to high impact sniper rifles, basically the 1000 yard stair family and they're reducing damage by 6.95%. Mid to high impact snipers can no longer reliably kill high armor guardians in super, okay? No land beyond is not affected by this damage reduction. Reduce the target acquisition for LDR 5001, the longbow synthesis to bring in line with other snipers in the same family. They talk about aim deflection aka flinch. You get the drop on an enemy sniper, reduce him down a pixel of his life. Right before you pull the trigger for the last bullet to exit your scout rifle's chamber, you see a glint and hear the sound of your head turning to mush. You raise your fist in the air and release a silent scream as to not to wake the baby. With these changes, we want to give your primary weapon a better chance at contesting sniper rifles. This is great in my opinion. Increased the starting strength for aim deflection aka flinch when players take damage while sculpting from 30% starting to 50% starting. With every subsequent hit, the strength of deflection increases until you hit 100% max deflection. Overall sniper ADS aim deflection multiplier increased by 1.9 times was 1.85 times. Moving on to auto rifles. With new auto rifles being introduced with the rise of iron, play test reveals a decrease in the importance of reloading. High rate of fire auto rifle users had enough bullets for multiple encounters. We do not want players feeling starved for ammo, but creating an opening for opponents to attack is an important part of the combat dance for Destiny. Middle rate of fire autos also received a small damage boost to help with damage fall off, but the resultant damage does not drastically change its time to kill. Reduce the maximum magazine size for the highest rate of fire auto rifle family. Basically all weapons in the doctrine of passing family. Increased damage to middle rate of fire auto rifles by 1.5%. Moving on to shotguns. While strong against combatants, fast firing shotguns have generally experienced low uptime in PvP. The following changes are meant to sweeten the value proposition. Starting with everyone's favourite Titan class setup, the Immobius. 
the tree spread of Titan class shotgun in ADS, 0.1 zoom factor increase, increased base stability by 60%, Reduce spread angle penalty on shotguns with the perk full auto. Infective is not being affected. Increased high rate of fire and middle low rate of fire shotgun damages by 2%. I honestly thought we were going to see a conspiracy theory nerf here, but I have not mentioned the one. Moving on to pulse rifles, and with high rate of fire pulse rifles being strong contenders in the crucible, we put our lens on the mid and low rate of fire pulse rifle models, nudging them slightly forward while still maintaining pulses around the 3 burst kill. Increased rate of fire for the hacker's pulse rifle, the Lurid Miller D. Minor increase to damage for the middle rate of fire pulse rifle family, aka the No Wins Mercy family, and they will receive a 2% damage increase. Moving on to sidearms. A unified damage for all sidearm types, increased damage for existing hacker sidearm families by 3% for low rate of fire and 7% for higher rate of fire. Decreased damage for non hit scan sidearms by 5% for Vestian Dynasty and Queen's Choice. Minor extension of damage fall off point for sidearms across the board plus 0.5 meters. Minor increase of stability for sidearms across the board. Added damage bonus in PvE, 20-30% to 30 depending on combatant tier. To accumulate two new faster firing sidearm families releasing in Rise of Iron, all current sidearm rate of fire bars will be slightly shorter. This is so that we have more space to display the rate of fire differentiation. Does not change the actual rate of fire though, just a stat bar representation. Moving on to rocket launchers, and this is what they state, while super satisfying, cluster bombs are not always super reliable. At times the bombs land inches off their effective range and hit for single point damages. Grenades and horseshoes is by far the most popular rocket launcher perk. While decreasing the chance that a rocket misses, it also removes and reduces many of the interesting combat prediction elements that make the weapon archetype interesting to play. By making cluster bomb more reliable and grenades and horseshoes less effective, we hope to mix up the rocket launcher perk section and inject a bit more technique into the archetype. Increased effective range and the explosions for the cluster bomb perk and the grenades and horseshoes perk activation radius reduced by 1.3. Basically a meter they're stating here. And truth will not be affected by this change. Moving on to machine guns. Now the high rate of fire family of machine gun really hits the fantasy when it comes to face mounting crowd control weapons. Increasing their damage per second will also help them shine in other scenarios too, basically boss battles. Increased damage on the highest rate of fire machine guns by 4%. Moving on to hand cannons. Now they state you will only find small bug fixes for the 2.4.0 patch for this weapon category. However, a preview to Rise of Iron Newly minted low rate of fire hand cannons have a higher maximum possible range stat, giving players a reason to choose that type of weapon. So they fixed an issue where the hand cannon Zowley's Bane rate of fire stat would display incorrectly. Fixed an issue where the Taken King Vanguard and Arms Day hand cannons Dan and Doubt Kuma Katok stats would display incorrectly. Moving on to fusion rifles, only small bug fixes here. Accelerated coils correctly reflects damage reduction now on the UI stat bars, no change to gameplay effect, fixed an issue where stat bars on the texture and rage displayed incorrectly. Now moving on to changes coming to perks, take a knee, now activates after 0.5 seconds of crouching, added flinch reduction 25% and increased aim down sight speed by 25%, exhumed, added an extra plus 5 seconds of total effect. So 15 seconds total, cascade, functional change, melee kills automatic reload a portion of the magazine, surplus now increases carried ammo capacity, grave rubber, increased activation change to 25%, it was 20%, gorilla fighter, increased stability and range bonuses by 200%. Think of it as a bonus hammer forge and perfect balance when the perk activates. Magazine perks. Magazine perks now give range bonuses, reduced impact stat bonuses that had no effect on base damage and only on a UI. On repeating rounds, adds plus 4 range, reduces minus 4 handling. High caliber rounds, adds plus 3 range, reduces minus 5 handling. Skip rounds, adds plus 5 range, reduces minus 3 handling. 
adds plus 5 inventory. On flinching, decreased efficiency of the perk from 25% flinch reduction to 15% flinch reduction. And as a final note they state, there are some bugs that require a more careful rollout that can be achieved through a small update. The stakes are much higher when the issues lie deep within the foundation of the Destiny engine. This bug has been an incredible difficult one to fix and test. We hope that we got it this time and it's Firefly. Possible fix for the crash related to special effects triggered by the Firefly perk. And that is it guys, that is all what they state about the 2.4.0 weapons update patch. But guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Tell me what you think about it down below in that comments section. Thanks for stopping by as always. Do drop a like, I do appreciate the support. And I'll catch you on that next one. Always in the wrong, knowing where we stand. But you and I. Get it right Left in the dark